Hey guys, Simon and Alex here from Top Tennis Training and welcome to video number three from our double-handed backhand course. Now this video is all about power, so let's take a look at the different ways we generate power on the two-handed backhand. Now there are three main power sources on the backhand. We have the rotational power, we have the momentum going through the ball, so the linear transition into the ball, and we also have the racket speed which is generated by our shoulders, our arms and our wrists. Now the first power source we're going to look at is the rotational power. Now let's have a look at Simon rotating his shoulders, separating his shoulders from his hips to generate that power. As you can see he's using his outside leg so that his left foot is out and he's in an open stance position. He's going to rotate and use his upper body and separate the shoulders from the hips to generate the power. He can also do this from a neutral position. So now he's going to step forward after that rotation and that way he's also able to generate the power when the ball is coming straight at him. There you have it guys, open stance and neutral stance with rotation. Now a great way to increase power on this coil and uncoil motion is to use the medicine ball. Now the medicine ball is used by top professionals around the world and they use it on a daily basis to increase that rotational power from the core. Now let's take a look at some medicine ball drills you can use to increase power on the backhand. In the first part of the drill, Simon's going to be using his open stance to throw the medicine ball back at me in the same move that he'd use on a backhand. So he's loading that outside leg and he's coiling and uncoiling. Load the outside leg, coil and uncoil. Perfect. Now Simon is going to do the same thing, but after the coil, he's going to step forward to recreate the neutral stance and uncoil after that. Coil, step, uncoil. Coil, step, uncoil. Coil, step, uncoil. Now to improve coordination for that coil and uncoil motion, we're going to use the ladder, so Simon's going to move through the ladder, at the end of which I'm going to feed him the ball, he's going to use his rotation, then he's going to step forward, use the neutral stance to throw the ball back at me. We're then going to repeat the process, but then I'm going to throw him a wider ball where he uses the open stance to hit the same ball back to me. There are different footwork patterns involved, which you can learn in a full course. For now, we're just going to show you a few here. Notice the recovery step that Simon's taking to recreate the movement that you'll have during the point. He's still using the shoulder rotation and the coil and uncoil to throw the ball harder at me. Remember we're increasing power here, so that coil and uncoil is the biggest power source for this drill. Now let's take a look at Simon doing the same drill but now I'm going to feed a little bit wider and Simon is going to use his open stance and a footwork pattern that again you're going to learn inside the full course. There Simon was using his open stance to load the outside leg and use his uh, other leg to uncoil. The knee was coming out and his shoulders were opening up in order to throw the ball faster at me. Now we're going to work on balance and stability, especially for the outside leg, so you're able to rotate the shoulders and generate that power with the rotation and the coil and uncoil motion that we saw earlier. This is a great example of something you can do in order to be stable, balanced and also coordinated for the shot. Now Simon is sticking the landing, but he's also rotating those shoulders to generate the power and then pushing back off the outside leg. Now we're going to use the hurdles to jump from left 
to right. This is particularly useful on the return and it's also useful for when you have those short balls to put away. You need to have the power of the rotation and also the balance in your legs. So let's have a look at Simon doing it now. So there Simon was using his outside leg to push away from the court. He was using his left leg to stabilize and then he's using that left leg with the coil and uncoil motion to jump forward over the, over the last hurdle and stabilize at the end. We're now going to involve the split step. This is again relevant for that return. Simon's gonna jump over the hurdle to simulate the split step. He's gonna push out with an open, open hip onto his left foot and then he's gonna stabilize and push off with his right, again generating that power with a coil and uncoil but using his legs in the process. Now it's important that you time your feed for when Simon lands, I would be throwing because I don't want him to hang around there for too long. This is again very useful for opening up the outside leg, giving you wider distances on the return. Now let's do it with the ball and the racket and recreate those movements. Here Simon is using the left to left motion, using his outside leg to coil around and uncoil. Now Simon is going to use his left to right, so now he's going to be in a neutral position going forward to the ball. And for the last example, this would be relevant for the return uh, or a ball that you have to put away when it's a little bit shorter, he's going to use his left to right motion. Thank you guys for watching, that was video number three from our double handed backhand course. Now this is just the start, if you really want to take your double hander up a couple of levels, look out for video number four coming out in the coming days. So check your inbox and also check your junk folder for that video. Do subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you very soon. All the best, see you guys soon.